All right, so I did a stream on Sunday and I was trying to hook up an image upload to this application that I'm kind of working on, but I kind of got stuck and didn't figure it out. So I wanted to make a video to kind of show you how you can potentially upload images to S3 from a UI. Let's just go ahead and run my service. And then I'm also going to run a little script I have here to spin up a locally running S3 bucket. So I want to first show you the application, right? So this is a a site where you can basically manage your online courses and you could potentially sell them to people. It's just something I'm building just to kind of teach you all along the way. But one of the features I wanted to work on was the ability for people to upload images. So if I were to click on manage here and I wanted to change the image of this, I'm just going to take like a screenshot and I can use that as my image. So over here, I have an input box that is basically a file type input. And if I were to go and find that screenshot, which is here, and I click upload image, what this is actually doing behind the scenes is hitting an endpoint to get a S3 pre-signed post URL. And then it basically uses that post URL to upload the image to S3. So now notice when I refresh the page, the image is still there. So I'm gonna give you a complete walkthrough of this and how like I got this all set up. So the first thing I had to do was I like to run everything locally. If you can get everything accessible locally so that you don't have to depend on remote Amazon services to do your local development. So the first thing I did was I brought in a S3 server library and you can run this locally on your machine on port 5000. You can give it a directory here. Um, and then also you can give it a config file. And I think it can also just host your S3 bucket here. So for example, if I were to, let's just copy this UID real quick. I want to show you just so you guys understand what's going on. Let's load up localhost 5000. I'm going to go to my bucket. Uh, it was called online course platform and I'm going to paste in that UID and notice that the image is actually hosted on my local S3 bucket. Pretty cool. Now the reason I do this is because if you set up your code properly, it's just a Boolean toggle. You can switch to basically switch it from deploying to a local S3 bucket or using a real live S3 bucket. So that's the first gist. Now let's talk about what happens when someone tries to click here on upload image. And how does that all work out? So I wanted to kind of diagram this out to kind of exemplify what's going on here. So let's just go ahead and add in a icon and I'm going to go ahead and just type in like a user. Okay. So do a user icon. Good enough. And when someone clicks on that file input and clicks the upload button, what's happening is we need to ask the Amazon SDK to generate us a pre-signed URL. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw an arrow and that's going to go to an Amazon an endpoint. So this will be a TRPC endpoint. So I'll just say get it and do a get request to a TRPC endpoint to get back a pre-signed post. Now what is a pre-signed post? Let me actually show you. If I go to my network here. You should hopefully be able to see what's going on. I'll just select a random, random image, click upload, and you'll see here it makes a request to create pre-signed URL. And if I look at the payload that comes back, you'll see it has a URL and it has a bunch of fields. Yeah, I know it's kind of hidden by my screen, but the URL is basically telling you where you need to do your multi-part form upload. And the fields are basically things you need to attach to your upload so that the S3 bucket knows how to verify that you have the correct like signature, right? So these are kind of like secret keys in here that allow you to upload to the bucket. Looks confusing. Literally, it's just attach these to a form data object and send it over to the wire. So that's the first thing we do. We do a get request. We get that pre-signed post URL and that sends it back to the user. Uh, and technically this is a browser, not a user. I guess I could say like the UI and that's going to send back URL plus fields. All right. So now the second step is we can use that pre-signed URL to upload it directly to an S3 bucket. So if I were to go to an icon and I say like um, S3 bucket, so using the pre-signed post, you can actually just upload directly to that bucket using a form post. So like you could use Axios, I believe I'm using fetch. So basically you're gonna use form data, you're gonna append a file, and then you're gonna do a fetch post request. Okay. And because you have all those credentials basically embedded in the fields here, when Amazon sees that request, it's gonna say, okay, you're authenticated. Let's just go ahead and allow you to upload that file and it'll store that file in the bucket. And then later on in the UI, if you want to kind of look at that image, you can just go ahead and reference 
that URL, assuming you have a uh, a web hosted S3 bucket, right? If you wanted to uh, like, if you wanted to add more protection on your bucket so that no one can just go and look at your images, you can do that. But keep in mind that these are UIDs and they're basically mathematically impossible to guess. So it, I think that's kind of safe enough depending on like your security needs. So that's kind of what's going on behind the scenes. So let me just go ahead and show you like the whole path, right? Let me just make sure you understand what's going on. So let's go to pages and let's go to our dashboard. Uh, let's go to this one. So this is the next page that basically does that upload. Um, let me kind of walk you through all the stuff. So I have a state variable for basically keeping track of the file that the user uploads. And that's basically when I click on this, um, it's going to keep track of the file. This is used down here um, on this file input, right? I'm using main time. So like this is given to us by default, but I'm basically saying when the file input changes, call that or update that state value with the file and then also like show the file name here using this uh, value property. Pretty simple, right? And then when you submit this form, notice there's a form here that has an on submit. We need to call this upload image um, function. Okay, so this is kind of like where all the fun stuff happens on the front end for doing the, the uh, pre signed post update. Okay, so the first thing we do is we check to make sure there's a file and if there's not a file, we return. Uh, second thing is we do that request to the TRPC endpoint to get back those URLs and the pre-signed post fields. Okay, again, these are like the credentials. Um, and then I'm basically just setting up a form data object here where I append all the fields. I'm also attaching a content type so that the S3 bucket knows we're uploading a zip file or an image or a PNG or something. And then finally you append the file at the end. The file has to come last for some reason. I didn't really look into it, but there's some reasons why you have to do that. Probably because of like the, the multi-part boundary has to be proper. I don't know. Anyway, you basically loop over all those, you pin them to the form data, and then I finally do a fetch request using a post method, using the form data to that URL, the pre-signed post sent back. Okay, so this this process right here that I'm highlighting, this is this. Right? I should technically say this is a post. We do the post, we get back the information, and then we do another post directly to the bucket using the URL that is sent back. Okay. And that's happening down here. This is that second line that goes from the user all the way to the bucket. And then when the upload is done, I basically clear the file input. I refetch the course information so that the image will refresh and uh, ignore all these commented out lines of code because <laughs> I was kind of prototyping some stuff. So that's about it for the front end. Let's look at the back end because that's also really interesting how that stuff works. So let's go to um, the root router. And let's go to the course router and let's find the pre-signed post URL. Okay, so how this works is basically someone is going to request to upload a, a course image. So they're going to pass in a course ID. And the first thing we do is we check, hey, like, is there a course that exists with that course ID? If there's not, throw an error back. Um, I probably want to add some additional authentication to verify that, hey, the user trying to do this request is a, an admin. I haven't added in that like role-based authentication yet. Um, I guess it's considered authorization, not authentication. But I haven't added in any type of role-based authorization, but I plan to do that. But anyway, what we do is we generate a new UID for the image ID, and I'm updating the course to say, hey, like store that new image ID inside of the Prisma schema. So if you look at the Prisma schema, I added an image ID here with a string, and that's gonna keep track of like the UID for the image. So once we updated that, we create a pre-signed post. Okay, now what this is doing is basically asking the Amazon SDK to set up those credentials that only allow someone to upload a file with the key of image ID, and it has to be an image. Notice here I'm saying the conditions start with a, a, uh, an image, and it can only be a certain size, to this bucket. That's coming from an environment variable, but it's just the name of the bucket. And that is basically how that works. If you look up here, I'm importing a AWS SDK S3 pre-signed post. I'm also importing the S3 client here from the AWS SDK uh, client S3. I set up a S3 client. Again, this is like prototyped. I need to make this be dynamic. This stuff should not be hard coded here. Um, but on a real system, you'd have this come from environment variable. You probably have this coming from an environment variable. In fact, you might not even have to set this at all when it's deployed to a Lambda. Um, and I think I have, what, a one megabyte limit or something? But that's kind of how it works on the back end. So 
basically the back end returns that URL for you. The front end is going to do that request using the URL and then it just refreshes the page, which is why you're seeing when I click upload, it changes the image. The code for all this is found on this online course platform repo. I'll put a link in the description. If you wanted to poke through this code and kind of figure out how I did this, um, I do need to update the readme and kind of explain how you can run this locally because you have to kind of run this as a separate node script right now. I do plan to incorporate this into the Docker Compose so you can just run one command, everything's spun up for you. You don't have to worry about it. But that code will be up there. Um, in fact, the code is already up there. So if you enjoy this overview, be sure to give me a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe. And like always, I have a Discord channel you're welcome to join if you just want to find a place to hang out with some other developers or just ask questions. Um, we've got a good community in the Discord. Other than that, hope this was useful. Have a good day and happy coding.